Who here owns a cell phone? Who here texts? 96% of people who own cell phones text. Oftentimes we use acronyms when texting, such as LOL, FML, BTW, IDC, IDK. All of these acronyms, we know exactly what they mean. What about IDF? What about RTC? What about AA, LOA, GOTWA, GAWA? Um, there are so many acronyms. These mean indirect fire, assembly area, line of, of assault, reserve officer training corps. The military and civilians has a huge disconnect between each other and a large gap. The purpose of my speech is to explain the aspects of the military and overcome all these misconceptions, at least a little bit, and to help persuade you to breach this gap and make that a new connection with military personnel. So, in World War II, 9% of Americans were serving in some sort of armed force. I'm sure some of you probably have a grandfather, an uncle, or some sort of connection to maybe, maybe even a brother who is in the military right now. Um, or maybe they were. I know I had a grandfather, my dad was. 9% uh, is actually a significant number, big. But now, only 1%, less than 1% actually. So, and that's in such a short period of time. Because of this decline in people serving, there's also been a huge gap that's created between the military personnel and civilians. So, here's my explanation of, you know, really quickly what the military is. I took an oath to serve the country, to protect the Constitution, and to follow my president, or our president. Even if I disagree with him, he's my commander and I follow him. So I've served my oath is to the country, my duty is to the country, to the people. Now the irony in this, with this whole gap and this whole disconnection, it's the people and the civilians, which you guys are civilians, who decide and control the military. So it's a huge issue if you guys don't understand what it is the military does and have misconnections between it. Um, when I told my little sister that I was going to be in the military and wore a uniform for school, the only way she could relate was saying that, oh, I wore a crayon to school in Spirit Week, and, and that's not really it, it's not really a costume, but you know, she was trying to understand, and that's how she could relate. Oftentimes, uh, I was talking to one of my cadre members, and uh, he's been an active duty officer his entire life, and somebody, he's at the gas station, and they're saying, oh, you in the reserves? He's like, no, they just don't understand how he could be active duty. They offered to buy his meals and pay for his drinks and such like that. And it's a really kind gesture, and he understands that too, but it's kind of funny that like they see it like that. This past weekend, I was uh, doing training missions. Um, the, we call it the FTX, field training exercise. And we're cleaning weapons in uh, Slavin, Lower Slavin. And it was really funny seeing students walk through the hallway and how they like sped up and freaked out and couldn't look at us because they thought that we would, I'm not really sure, like, I thought it was just kind of funny. My friends would walk by and they like thought they couldn't say anything or do anything, they didn't know what to do. And it's all because of this disconnect and this breach, you know, we want to like just, I don't know. It's very, very interesting how that happened. So with that, I've taken this oath but I also have a whole value system to stand to. There's seven main army values, and it's really a way of life. These values, like what makes the military different than anything else is I don't, I might take off the uniform, but I don't clock out. Like I'm always held to the standard. I always follow these values. That's very different than any other profession where, you know, and that's what makes the uh, military so successful is that they, it is a way of life that you follow. So with the military, there's three main branches, the Army, Air Force, and Navy, and then through the Navy you have the Marines, and the Navy SEALs, and other such, and you know, the Coast Guard as well. Um, and then within all of those branches, you can be an engineer, a medic, civil affairs, intelligence, and I don't find out until 
I don't find that that specialty branch or MOS is what we would call it until I'm a senior, which is kind of weird. I've signed myself to serve for eight years upon graduation and where I commissioned as a second lieutenant in the army, but I don't know my job, the job I'm doing and the military could be a completely different place and I won't know until I'm a senior what it is. So it, it's kind of crazy. Uh, last Thursday, four U.S. soldiers died in Afghanistan. The top news article of that day on USA Today was modern art about cows being art, which is, you know, given sort of cool. Really cool that cows are art, but still, I saw that as kind of like, wow, that's a little strange. You know, what was yelled was IDF, incoming, incoming, IDF. All we usually send to each other, the acronyms are a little different. You know, not indirect fire. Our lives here are so great and so thankful for that. You know, our text messages are never acronyms like, you know, danger, watch out. Because here we don't have that danger. We're in a safe bubble here. And that's all because of these people who give and serve. And so I think it's time that this connection is understood and not breached. Uh, and, uh, and understood. People are dying for us every single day so that we can watch baseball games and go have fun on Halloween and just enjoy our lives. And that's because of these people. So ask questions. Those girls who were walking by the hallway while I was cleaning my rifle, they should have just stopped out and said, hey, what's up? Like, what do you do? What happened this weekend? Instead of shuffling by with their head down, look up, say, how are you? And what is the job you do when you see somebody in, in uniform? They'll appreciate it and they'll love to explain it to you. The other is to stay informed. You know, it's easy to, you know, all we care about is Miley Cyrus and the latest thing she did. But really, I think we should put more emphasis maybe on what some other people are doing. Somebody just received the Medal of Honor for their duties in Afghanistan. It's a huge honor. But Miley Cyrus is the top news. It's a little strange to me how that happens. The other and most important thing that I think we could do, a really easy way is to say, is to uh, write a letter. Um, I'm creating this care package program with my accounting teacher, her really good friend is in Afghanistan right now. Uh, he's part of the transportation. And so he's, the article that I was just talking about, he was actually part of it. Uh, it was in uh, Bagram, um, October 24th. And his company would love magazines, your old Civ book, and a letter, just a letter saying, hey, how are you, how are you doing? If you guys could write that and give it to me, within like the next two weeks, I'll send it to them. And it's just such an easy way to show someone that you appreciate them. Maybe you don't fully understand what it is that they do, but the fact is that you understand that they need someone there and to help that connection. So that's what I call finding to do. And to research more if you're interested, if you have any questions, ask me, because I would love to answer them. Again, I don't even fully understand the military because it's so in depth and there's so much there, but you know, it's only through questions and actually talking about what's going on in the world that will fix the world. So, guys, have a nice day. That's my speech. Oh, I forgot to start recording.